following a visit to Lake Chad, where he had seen reed boats in use, Tor Heyerdahl traveled to Ethiopia, where the Blue Nile begins its journey to the sea by plunging over the Titiset Falls. He had come to Ethiopia to find papyrus to build sea-going craft. His plan was to cut the reeds here and send them to Egypt, where papyrus was now in short supply. When we came up the Red Sea, this was in wartime, so fighting was going on between uh, Israel and Egypt. And when we were unloading the papyrus, it was uh, very dry, and they were shooting from the other end, and all the labors disappeared. We really were afraid that the, uh, the papyrus would catch fire. Tour Heyerdahl's goal was to see if a reed boat could have been used to cross the Atlantic. Could such a craft have been used to make contact between the Old World and the ancient civilizations of Central and South America? His ship, based on models and tomb paintings, and rafts still in use, was named Ra, the word for the sun in ancient Egypt. This could be an experiment, not only into the past, but also into the future. I felt that in reality, we are on this planet uh, living just like on a raft. We are all together and we will sink and float together. In a few weeks, they would know whether a reed boat could cross the Atlantic, as it might have done before Columbus in 1492. The voyage seemed to be progressing well. Okay. Then, both the steering oars broke. Far out into the Atlantic, the stern began to sink. Originally, Tour had fitted a rope stay from the deck to the top of the curved stern, as was shown on all the Egyptian paintings. But his Chad boat builders had taken it away. The craft was beginning to break up. It could not stand the force of the waves. They judged that the nearest islands in the Caribbean were less than a week away. But by now, the ropes on the starboard side had given way. Pieces were breaking and drifting off, and sharks were appearing. Two American photojournalists sailed from Barbados to assist them. Ra was sinking. To a man, the crew wanted to go on, but for Tour, this was a scientific expedition. They had come within close call of the New World, but Ra had not been strong enough. I realized that we had proven our point. Uh, the uh, papyrus was floating, it was the ropes that had bested, but on the other hand, I noticed that to most people, including my own crew, it was the miles that were missing, were getting there, that counted and not the uh, miles behind us. So I really felt that to do it correct, I had to do it all over again with the experience we had. In May 1970, Ra 2 was unveiled. It was slightly smaller than Ra 1. Tour had brought the Anmara Indians from Bolivia to help build the craft. Once again, he flew the UN flag and carried a multinational crew. Yeah. 
This time they had a monkey and a duck as companions. They also had the knowledge of their earlier voyage to guide them. This time the rudder would not break. But sadly, the ocean was polluted. We collected uh, oil clots uh, 43 days out of the 57 the trip took. I couldn't say exactly how many days we would have collected if we'd done the same on the, the first trip. But uh, certainly the, the ocean was in a terrible state, which was confirmed later when both the uh, United States and the Soviet Union sent out the research vessels to double-check uh, our uh, observations. Ra, too, was the more seaworthy of the craft. Its supple reeds made it possible to ride the enormous waves, but disaster struck. However, Ra kept going. Land ahoy! This time they made their rendezvous and an airplane flew over to greet them. They had made it safely to Barbados. Their voyage had shown that it was possible for a ship made of reeds to navigate the Atlantic. In 1977, Tour went to the Tigris River in southern Iraq. There, the Marsh Arabs, descended from the ancient Sumerians, still built houses and boats from the marsh reeds. Tour saw parallels between this boat building and his earlier attempts to travel the ocean on reed and balsa wood craft. Sumeria is called the cradle of civilization. I was uh, very much impressed by the Marsh Arabs. I uh, thought it was an exceptional uh, people, uh, clean in every sense of uh, the word, 
And I had a feeling that here I met an eternal civilization. The reeds on Ra 1 and 2 had absorbed too much water. Now they were to be cut at the right time. Okay, this is fine. Uh, guys, tell them to start cutting. They can start. To help build the craft, tours sent for the same group of Amara Indians from Lake Titicaca in Bolivia. This craft was experimental. It would be twice the size of Ra 2. Long bundles of reeds were lashed together into two much larger bundles. pattern of binding was repeated. Finally, the larger bundles were tied inwards toward a smaller central bundle. Once in the water, the reeds became as strong and as supple as rope. Unlike the raw ships, this craft was fitted with a triangular mast and a centerboard for steering. A local river pilot was engaged to help them travel down the river. We have to keep to the port side because it's a very shallow in the turn here. As yet, they did not have their main sail. Normally, the seasonal wind blew from the northeast. But now, wind blew them westward. Unable to be navigated, Tigris had to be towed to the safety of Bahrain. On an island off the coast were thousands of burial mounds. This suggested that people must have traveled great distances to bury their dead. Here there were seals and weights from the Indus Valley. Tour spoke with Geoffrey Bibby, a leading British expert on Bahrain. Uh, we have been 11 men on board with uh, 15 tons of cargo. And as you saw, we were floating very high and we yes. could with no difficulty carry not only 30 tons, but even uh, uh, 50 tons and uh, come right in here in uh, a water that with, would fit what you say here, yeah. the water level would have without, been Without time. putting you so deep in the water. With no you, problem you at all. Bahrain had been an important trading post with Sumeria and India. This might be the location for the legendary city of Dilmun. Okay, make pass, Yuri. The main sail had been repaired, and Tigris was now able to reach a top speed of five knots. Navigating the Straits of Hormuz was extremely difficult. We had the big tankers whizzing by us day and night. They didn't see us on the radar, and we were unable to move out of the way quickly without uh, putting the oars into the water. And uh, these big tankers cannot turn within a mile. Muscat was their next destination. Because they had a Russian in their crew, the welcome from local officials was not very warm. What would be your next port after this? Are you intending to touch well, another port? Or? Uh, well, we, we just want to go as long as the vessel will float and see. Uh, yeah, it's a te testing uh, yeah. 
primitive type of vessel to see how long it will float and, and where it's uh, likely that ancient people could have traveled. Yeah. And with at least one uh, outer ramp on one side. Yeah. Contains copper. So what we assume that they were doing here in the... Dr. Paolo Costa, the local director of antiquities, drove tour into the interior where there was a pyramid-like structure and evidence of copper mining. This suggested links with Sumeria. Perhaps these had taken place by sea. Tour had seen tablets in Ur, which had recorded goods exchanged for copper from Makan. Sumerian records there also mentioned Meluha, the most easterly of the great civilizations. Two weeks later, Tigris anchored off Pakistan, while Tour made a 300-mile journey up the Indus Valley to ruins of a city. For 3,500 years, little was known about the remains of this city. Local people call it Mohenyo Daro, or Mound of the Dead. Large baths, perhaps used for religious purposes, had been lined with asphalt, which may have come from Mesopotamia. I uh, have uh, suggested that we uh, set a course straight for the uh, Gulf of Aden, Egypt, and the uh, inner corner of the me Mediterranean world. Now, uh, my interest is to find out whether it was possible that all these big civilizations could have uh, received inspiration one from the other. Once again, Tigris set sail, this time for Africa. Tour's scientific experiment clashed with the realities of the modern world. Ethiopia was at war with Somalia. Now it would not be possible to land in Somalia. And then the wind dropped completely. Next, Tigris was forbidden from entering Yemeni coastal waters. Eventually, they docked in Djibouti. Tour was disheartened. A journey to Egypt, to ancient civilization, would not be possible. Tour decided Tigris should not become a tourist attraction. He decided to burn Tigris, which had been flying the UN flag, as a protest against war. Take off your hat. <laughs> 